First off, before anything, I want to thank Mr. Amazing from the bottom of my heart for being so awesome to us. He's donated so, so much to our channel and just been a massive, massive supporter that I'll never be able to repay that back. And I, thank you, man. Thank you so much for being so kind and generous and just everything you've done. Thank you so much. Bang. Neves Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is busy. And I had to hurry up and do this review because I got to have an excuse to get it out of my pocket. Like It's like every day I have an excuse to carry it. Like, oh, man, I got to do the review. Got to do the review. And... So I, I honestly, you know, I did, uh, it's not that I rushed this, but I had other knives that should have been ahead of this for review, but I got to get it out of my pocket and I got to have an excuse. Like you got the review done. You don't need to carry it right now. Carry something else. So this is the Medford Slim Midi on bearings in all its glory. It's absolutely beautiful. S35 VN blade steel beautiful hollow hand done hollow grind and you can tell it's hand done first of all i heard medford explain this so that's how i know it but besides that he explained that when you see it turn right here how you see the lines the the grind pattern the belt uh pattern turn right here that's done by hand otherwise it would be straight across so you can tell it's hand done and it's beautifully done it's got kind of like a stone washed flats up here. It's a polished and then a stone washed and then the beautiful belt set. Now, I did make basically a sharpening video out of this. So I'll play that at the end. If you care about watching it being sharpened, I do have that at the end. Now, I will say, uh, you know, I, I want to talk about it at the end of this because um one of the biggest things, or not even the biggest, but a really big thing about this knife is their heat treat, man. I've sharpened a bunch of Medfords and their heat treat always blows me away. How, not just how well it sharpens, but just how it feels on the stone. And I'll go into more of that at the end. But this knife is, let's just get right into the specs really quick so we can knock them out. It's just under eight inches in total length. It's like seven and seven eighths with a three and a half inch blade length. Great size comparison is the Chris Reeves Sabenza, which is a little bit longer, but still, you know, still in the same size, you know, reference. Another knife, thanks to Mr. Amazing. And then we have the Spyderco Manix 2 which these are right there, basically the exact same length. This is like a, a 16th or, yeah, basically like a 16th shorter than the Spider Manix 2. You could say they're the same exact length. And just in case if you don't know that one, here's the Spider Co. Para 2, which you can see they're basically the same length too, but the Spider Co. does have it slightly ever so slightly longer now let's look at the thickness because it is very thin a lot of people know the thickness of the spider co and it is thinner than the spider co in all ways even in the the um the blade stock thickness now obviously well i don't know if that's obvious but titanium frame lock no lock bar insert no over travel stop, but the action is amazing. Listen to the, the action because it also has great acoustics. So I'll just get right into the action before we talk about the cutting. The action is amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. It's so easy to reverse flick it. It's so easy to thumb flick it. It's so easy to slow roll it. The drop on it is nice and drop shutty. It is on bearing, so 
I heard some people saying that theirs wasn't quite like this one, but their older models were on phosphor bronze, so they weren't quite as fidgety, I guess you could say, as this, or as easy to deploy or drop as this. I mean, it, it's so easy to deploy, and very, very smooth. Extremely, extremely smooth. The hole is or the the groove is rather sharp in a good way not in a bad way it is nice and sharp where it makes it to where you can easily reverse flick it without even hardly trying you can use your nail or just the meat of your finger it just works out really good detent is perfectly tuned zero complaints on the action or the detent I couldn't have asked for it to be any better, to be honest. This is the smoothest Medford I've ever felt and the funnest. Um, I just love flicking it. <laughs> it's so addicting. It really is. Not only from the sound, but just between this hole, how easy it is to use, to the clicky detent, to the lockup, to the sound, just everything. It's just so addicting to, to play with. Now, the lock bar, there is not a cutout for the lock bar. It is tight in there. And I almost wish they would have just cut one of these squares out just so I can push it. But the lock bar strength, even though I heard so many people say, man, the lock bar is just so strong on my fingers. I'm sorry. This one's not. This one's perfect. I have no issue with it, even though I'm like a crazy freak. And uh, lock bar access with this one. I just put my finger right in front of it, put pressure right in between the two, and then move my finger sideways. And no issues at all. I would like to have a cutout, but it's really not that big of a deal because the lock bar strength isn't like insane. Yeah, it's strong. It lets me know it's very, very much locked up, but. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Nice and centered, perfectly centered. Now you see that the, the stop pin right here, this is the stop pin. Those are not thumb studs. You use the groove right there is the stop. And then that is the stop pin for the closed position. Now let's talk about cutting with it because cuts pretty doggone good. I, I enjoyed cutting with it. It is thin you know, like in the hand and it is not, not sharp. I'll, I'll say this during cutting with it. I normally put my finger up here and then use my finger on the back like this. So cutting with it, you know, it cut really good. I m did most of the cutting with it before I sharpened it because I wanted to talk mostly about before I laid the edge back, but it did cut very good. No problems with cutting with it, sliced really good. Now there were times where stuff kind of got caught up in the fuller a little bit and it kind of slowed me down a little bit, but all in all, no complaints, it cut really good. Um, you could say it's thin in the hand so you don't have the best ergos, but they're not horrible. They're not horrifying. You, you can get a pretty decent grip on it. Now for, um, you know, like for holding on to it, you know, it since it is thin and uh, kind of sharp, I'll talk about that in a second. You know, it, it doesn't give you, I guess, the best grip, you know, so you are going to, you know, have to deal with that during the cuts. But, you know, it's it's really not that big of a deal because the blade goes through the materials rather easily. Um, and that's before sharpening it. Like I said, the fuller does kind of get caught up and does slow you down a little bit. For the utility cuts, this thing has a very acute tip. We will show that. It's actually the thinnest part of this blade. Because behind the edge thickness, I measured it about 15 thousandths, uh, you know, in uh, this portion right here about 15 thousandths. Now behind the tip was about 10 thousandths, right directly at the tip. And you can see how big of a difference that is between right here, how the bevel goes from bigger to smaller when it gets to the tip. That's because it's so much thinner right there. And if you look, you will see if it'll come up 
how acute that tip is. It is very, very thin behind the tip. So since you have such an acute tip, I tend to wrap my middle finger right around there and grip it like that. And the utility cuts were great, you know, considering um, if I had better leverage, yeah, it uh, would be even better. And it's not a utility blade, but it is a drop point blade, which is like a jack of all trades blade shape. So it does utility cuts just fine. Even through thicker cardboard, I had no issues. And yeah, it just, you know, it does have um, a decent sized belly, but it also has a nice good drop to that tip. So you don't have to lift up too high to get to the tip. So you still have quite a bit of leverage going down towards the, the, the cut you are making with the tip. So great, great cutting. Now, or, you know, great, great utility cuts. Now the... Let's talk about these ergos really quick because, you know, it is squared off. You know, it's not contoured. It's flat scales. You see how it's nice and flat. The edges aren't really, they're knocked down. Like they're not sharp, but they're also at an angle. And then you see because of the lock bar cutout that it's pretty thin right there. So in this grip, you know, you do feel it in the hand. I tend to hold my finger up there and kind of wrap my hand around right there. So, you know, it doesn't bother me as bad. Now when sharpening it, I did feel it quite a bit, but um, it's pretty comfortable in the hand considering how thin and how uh, flat it is. You know, it does have that, uh, you know, that metal feel where, you know, you're kind of holding a, um, you know, flat piece of metal, which, you know, I don't mind, but it doesn't give you the best ergos. But like I said, considering they're not bad, they're pretty, it's pretty comfortable in my hand. I love it. So um, now the clip. In and out of the pocket, the clip works great. No complaints. You can easily get it in with one hand without stretching your pocket or anything like that. You can get it in and out very fast and opened up and, you know, to your cut back into your pocket. I like a knife that I can get out of my pocket, get open, make my cut, close it back up and put it back in my pocket without having to use my other hand, which this works great. Now, in a minute, I will have a couple complaints about the clip, but it works just fine. And it works, you know, it works really good. Now, looking at how beautiful this thing is, now you can get these in lots of different configurations. You can get these in so many different versions and so many different ways. They're very customizable. And this is just mind blowing how beautiful it is. It's so beautiful. It really plays with the light. I love the flame anode clip. And yeah, Medford, Medford killed it with this. You, also, this finish does kind of add some texture to it. You know, like when I use the pinch grip like this, I really have a little bit of texture. Um, you know, there's a lot of great grips that you can use it with that work really good. And personally, for my hand, it does fit very well. Uh, I like that it kind of has um, a straight back, yet a little bit of a taper where you have a lot of grips, including the one that kind of lays across your palm. You know, it just, it winds up working out really, really good, especially for EDC. You know, yeah, it's thin and flat and not contoured, but it works good. You can see they do have a lanyard hole back here. Um, it's only on one side. You can kind of see it's a triangle right here. So they do have a lanyard hole and the blade doesn't hurt it. If it will show up, it's kind of messing around with my camera. But no problems with that. It's just it'll be only on one side. Now, some bad things. Before we get into sharpening, I do want to talk about a few bad things. Um, so one is the clip. You see how it doesn't sit and lots of Medford clips do this, so it's not just this knife. You see how it's not touching the the scale? It sits up high. I like the way it makes a nice acoustic, but it's it could be tighter. It's very loose, loosey-goosey in the pocket. It doesn't give you a lot of tension. And, you know, it's 
it's okay, you know, it does make it easy to get in and out of the pocket without a problem, but I would like a little bit of tension and, you know, you don't get it from this. This is very loose in the pocket. Next thing, proprietary hardware, I'd rather see just like how they did with all the rest of the hardware. Just either some Allen's or some Torx bits. In this case, it is Torx, or sorry, it is, uh, you know, Allen, which is stronger than Torx, so, um, which they are nice and big. And then you see you have these really big ones right here. So very big hardware. Love to see that. I'm very happy to see that. But um, this screw right here, it's kind of hard to see, but this screw is actually up a little bit higher than this one. Even though I love the big hardware, I, and I'm really this really isn't that big of a complaint, but it's slightly up higher, just that screw. On this side, um, it might be this, yeah, it's pretty much the same way. So, the, you know, maybe it's intentional. I don't know. I do like the nice uh, thick backspacers that they do have them in. But then this coating is really nice. But yeah, for some reason, the one screw sits up just a little bit higher than the other one. These are these protrude out a little bit, too. I would have liked to have seen them countersunk. Not that big of a deal, but, you know, it is a thing. And then I would have liked to have seen a cutout. Is that just playing with the light? Sorry, I just want to see if... Anyways, I would have liked to have seen them add in a cutout right here so you could just go right to the side and push the lock bar. They probably didn't do that because maybe it'd be very uncomfortable in the hand. I don't know, but it would have benefited a little bit, you know, from having to go at an angle right here or go right from the front and push in on it because it can get, I guess, a little uncomfortable. I, for some reason, this one's not bad. Um, I know a lot of other people complained, and I don't doubt that theirs wasn't because I have felt some extremely strong lock bar tension from Medford. This just isn't one of them. So, but all in all, I really don't have many complaints. There's only one other little one. Um, and this is 90% of Medford's that I've seen. Um, not all of them, but most of them. So you see, let's see on this side. You see the plunge right here, or the, the not the plunge, the finger trail right here. You see how the thickness is actually thicker right here. So this is the plunge grind right here where the belt started. I wish they would have just cut this out a little bit more and made it where this was perfectly even. It to, For me to reprofile this, it was a struggle. Um not that big of a deal, but this part right there, just that one piece, since this little corner right here is thicker than the rest of the blade, it makes it to where you got to work so much harder on this little spot if to reprofile it. So, but yeah, in order to reprofile it, I did have to work twice as hard on you know the right near the choil area because it was you know it just is what it is but man this all right let's talk about the sharpening now because i really don't have any more complaints this thing is just too amazing i i love this knife so i know this is going to be a long video so if you do care about the sharpening you can finish watching otherwise this is the end of the video for you if you don't care about the sharpening um I love you guys, and let's get into the sharpening. All right, so here is the factory edge on this S35V, and the factory edge was great. Um, most factory edges that I've ever seen from Medford have always been really, really good, but I have been using it for a while, and I just wanted to put my own edge on here. Now, I wanted to also lay it back. Another reason why I really wanted to put my own edge on here is because Medford does such great work on their heat treat. Their, their steel, every time I've sharpened them, they've always had an amazing heat treat. 
Um, honestly, this S35 VN feels a lot like M390. I mean, it's just, it's very, very hard on the stone. Um, or what I mean is the steel feels incredibly hard. Like you can usually tell the difference between a good heat treat and a bad heat treat by the way it feels on the stone. And in this case, it just feels so good. It feels so basically hard that's the best way i can explain it on the stone so i wanted to reprofile it and lay the edge back just a little bit basically about 17 degrees per side and it would also make it a better cutter which obviously it did but you know not saying there was anything wrong with the way it cut before but you know i just wanted to put my own edge on there and also the factory edge that they had was almost a polished edge and s35 vn does a lot better with a toothy finish in my opinion now granite this heat treat would be the best case scenario probably for putting a polished edge on this knife and i know how beautiful it would look i was very close just going with mirror edge just because it would look so good and like i said the heat treat would probably wind up working out to its benefit on being the best case scenario for it to have a mirror polish but i can always do that in the future now my biggest issue here was hitting that corner by the choil that i was talking about right where the plunge grind is it's thicker right there so basically i had everything reprofiled but just one part by the the choil was just not working out not that it wasn't working out. i was just going very slow it, it you know it took a lot of time i spent 90 percent of my time on this first stone reprofiling getting it all done as i should have but i spent a lot longer on it than typical because of that little spot you can see even here i still haven't completely hit it um and you can see the taper up to the tip how you know the thickness changes that the tip is very thin, but I just kept working at it, you know. Um, I wasn't gonna flip over to the other side until it was done or at least super close to being done. So I wanted the entire edge to be completely done. And basically I wanted to make sure that I wouldn't mind leaving it um, perfectly the way it was before I flip, you know, on that side. So I continued working on it and I probably spent about 10 minutes per side, uh, you know, sharpening it, if not a, a couple minutes, you know, give or take a couple minutes. And even still, you can see it's not a hundred percent hit by that choil. It's almost completely done, but not a hundred percent. So you know, I just kept working at it and working at it and working at it. And the steel is just so hard. The, the tea treat is just done so good on it. And actually, it's easier and better to sharpen um, a steel with a good heat treat than it is with a poor heat treat. It's so much easier. The steel feels better. It sharpens up easier. Just everything works out better. But the one thing, though, is that it is really hard. So, you know, um, in some ways it sharpens faster and in others, you know, it might take a little bit longer. So now I've pretty much got the entire thing all done, but there is a tiny, tiny bit left by that choil area. But it's so small, you can probably barely see it, but I can see it. Now you can see the, the angle difference from one side to the other. It is a lot bigger a lot bigger but we're going to flip it over and we're going to start working on it and then i just basically will finish that last little tiny uh spot by the heel uh, on the next uh, stone this uh was 160 micron slash 120 micron so it's a very very coarse stone so it sharpens very very fast so it actually says a lot about how long it took me to reprofile it, you know, uh, you know, with this steel. Because this is S35VN. It's not like this is S90V or S110V or anything. Don't get me wrong. It felt incredibly good on the stone. But, you know, it just took, take a, took a little bit more time, even though it feels so good and it sharpens so good. So I worked this side and, you know, went through the exact same issue, the exact same thing. 
you know, I just took, you know, extra, extra time to reprofile it and especially to get my angle nice and flat at that heel and to get my grip pattern to cover from the top of the bevel down to the very, very edge. So here you can see, you know, I, you know, the reprofiling is pretty much done. And I, I believe I'm pretty much ready by this point to flip. Yep, I'm going to flip the stone here and go to the other side of this stone. And basically just do the same thing over again until, you know, my grip pattern is nice and covered. I almost wanted to stay and just leave the edge the way it was from that first stone. It was so toothy and so sharp and it looked so good. That's, you know, why I didn't, I only went one more stone after this one and that was it. So um, I don't even think I filmed it. I think I basically just show me removing the burr. So there's not going to be too much more to this sharpening video, but I do want to show how sharp it came out because it came out ridiculously sharp. But, you know, I'm uh, basically just finishing it up, making sure that my grip pattern covers that little area down by the, you know, heel of the blade or, you know, by the choil area, right? You know, this is closest to your finger when you're holding the knife because it was tough getting the grip pattern nice and flat right there covering the whole area at 17 degrees per side i did notice that one side might have been a little bit thicker than the other but it's so minute and this is hand done that i can't even complain it is as close to perfect as you can get pretty much um, at least to the naked eye i can barely tell you know what, let's skip forward to the me knocking the burr off. So now I'm just doing one and one passes on each side, knocking the burr off. The burr came off extremely easy. Not an issue at all. I think I maybe did three passes per side and it was pretty much completely done. I did strop it. I don't think I, I didn't record the stropping, but I just hit it a few times on uh, what a half a micron strop. And then here, this is before I ever stropped. And look at this through paper towel. That's before I ever stropped. Yeah, it didn't go all the way down, but regardless, look how easy it just cuts the first part of that. That's sharp. Fresh off the stone, no strop. And then here it is through some paper. So clean. Super clean. It is far, far sharper than it was. Whew. That's nice. All right, we will take a close look at this edge. And then we'll wrap this up. You can see how coarse the grip pattern is. I definitely left it at a low grit. It's right about 600 grit. Nice and flat. Maybe I might take it to a polish on the next sharpening. Possibly just to see how good it does polish up. You can really see how flat that edge is. And then let's see if we can get it to show this side. Looks really, really good. I love seeing that strong grip pattern. Now you can see right here at the very tip right there, how it still didn't hit that last little piece. I thought it did, but I guess it didn't. But Regardless, I'll get it on the next one. It looks beautiful. Mr. Amazing, I have to say, you've literally made my dream knives come true. And your generosity just blows me away. I, I, like I, I can't thank you enough. Thank you guys for watching. I love you guys. Peace.